Hello and welcome to Universe Sandbox 2. So I have a suggestion here asking what if Jupiter was the mass of the sun? Now there's two ways we could do this. We could either turn Jupiter into a second sun or we could just make it a kind of black star. Black star being a star that just emits no heat pretty much. Well, let's go ahead and give this a shot. Let's open up the performance system. Um, where would that be? Ah, there it is. No Kuiper Belt. Should still have Ceres, right? Oh, it's missing Ceres and Vesta, but that's fine. What's going on with the background here? That's a bit unusual. I'm not used to seeing that. Even, even the Magellanic Cloud over there is uh, lacking a little bit. Let's see if we could just change this background and fix that. No, it's all low res for some reason. That's a bit odd. Let's just make it just stars. Okay, so I think the easiest way to do this would just be to go to Jupiter, and let's go ahead and set the mass to one sun. We're not going to make it emit heat, because that will burn away all the objects, but we will make an object that is the mass of one sun. And, well, let's just see what happens to the uh, planets and their orbits. Let's go ahead and delete these uh, small asteroids here for the sake of performance. I think what we'll focus on object-wise is the sun as the main object. So let's go ahead and hit play. Okay, things are seeming stable so far. It is currently uh, 16 days per second. Oh, and things are happening. Oh, yep, the sun is starting to coast towards the Jupiter sun. But since I deleted the particles, we can probably speed this up a little bit. There we go. Oh, and there goes Earth. Earth is out of here, and it is cooling down rapidly as it gets further and further away from these stars. And same with Mars, ejected very quickly. Venus and Mercury still seem to be holding tight around the sun. Venus is getting really, really close. Look at how close Venus is ordering. Let's uh, go ahead and pause that here. Let's check out Venus. 1700 degrees Celsius. Let's see what that is in. Oh, they don't have Fahrenheit. Okay, so that would be, what, roughly 4000 or something in Fahrenheit? So, very warm. Maybe upwards in around 5,000, so that is a very, very hot planet. It's being, like, evaporated away, I could only imagine it is. Let's see what's happening to Mercury. Mercury is looking pretty normal. I think it's a little bit warmer and a little bit closer to the sun. But let's go ahead and zoom this. Um, looks like the sun, so our screen isn't wobbling so much. There we go. I think I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit so we can actually see what happens to the outer planets. Currently moving upwards of 4.5 to 5 months per second. It'll vary. And Earth and Mars are just gone. I don't think they're going to be coming back. I don't think they're going to orbit eccentric or anything like that. I think they're just ejected at escape velocity. And I think the same fate just happened to Uranus. Is it going to happen to Saturn and Neptune as well? We'll find out. And Neptune is flying through in between both stars. Ooh, did a little curve. And Neptune is actually orbiting very close to the Sun. That might mean a bad fate for Venus. Saturn is just hanging out over there. Let's go ahead and halt the simulation and let's see what hap what is happening to Neptune. No longer a cold gas giant at all. It's currently sitting at 801 degrees Celsius. And I'll probably edit in the temperature in Fahrenheit.
it's fluctuating between 700 and 800 degrees, so those are some pretty crazy seasons going on there. Reselect the sun so we're not wobbling the screen. And this is going to diminish the accuracy of the simulation up close, but I'm really curious what's going to happen to Saturn now. Okay, that's a bit too much. Oddly enough, I think Saturn might have the most stable orbit. Since it's orbiting outside of these two stars, it might actually orbit all the way around. No way I could actually test this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Uranus, Mars, and Earth. Because I know when objects are further away in simulations, they tend to make the simulation lag a little bit more. And there goes Saturn going for its first orbit. And I think that is going to be bad for Saturn. Could try viewing the orbit map, but since there's two stars, it might be a little bit quirky. Yeah, it's definitely quirky. If uh, all the planets are still here. Yep, we got Venus, Neptune, and Mercury. And yeah, Neptune is now glowing. I assume Venus is as well. Mercury seems to be mostly basically the same as it was before. It seems to be unaffected. So let's go ahead and zoom. I'm really curious what's gonna what's the uh, fate of Saturn. But because there's so many planets here, I can't really time lapse all that quickly without it, you know, lagging up and diminishing the quality of the simulation. I mean, not that it's already not diminished quite a bit. I mean, look at those lines. Okay, just for the sake of curiosity, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the inner planets so we can see the fate of Saturn. Because these seem to be, oddly enough, pretty stable. Uh, in the long term, I don't really know what Neptune's sitting there, but I really want to see what's going to happen to Saturn. Oddly enough, I think Saturn is actually stable just with a very eccentric orbit. orbital path seems consistent anyways. It doesn't really appear to be getting closer and closer or anything like that. The semi-major axis would probably be hard to track. It is. The, the uh, game doesn't really track things very well when there's two primary masses like the Sun and Jupiter both being in quarter mass. The game doesn't seem to really favor binaries too well, but... It seems like Saturn has a pretty stable orbit. Let's check the uh, temperature fluctuations. I think it's actually staying relatively cool. It spiked up to 190 there, but it seems to be uh, dropping back down to 245. And then spikes up to around 200 to 190. This is negative. So it's still a very cold planet. And the orbit still seems to be stable. Now, of course, recreating this test will not be the same every time. It really depends on many different factors, such as when you actually start the simulation, because when it, the uh, position of Jupiter really matters when you're doing this. Let's go ahead and reload the simulation. Because you can see that Jupiter is currently right here, but if it was right here, it would start pulling the objects from that location, which, depending on where things actually are in orbit, is going to ultimately play the play in the uh, end result of the simulation. So. There's nothing that's really able to be recreated here. It's just a fun little test. In all honesty, I just test uh, suggestions and, you know, just do simulations in this game. This game is an early access alpha. It's not intent, or well, it's intended to be accurate, but it's not currently accurate in any sort of way. It's not going to compete with like 
supercomputers or anything, uh, or supercomputers or anything actually doing like, uh, super crazy particle simulations, you know, simulating mass into like very specific accuracy or anything like that. No, this game takes a lot of shortcuts, and when you do things like time step the game, like speed up time, and this little timer gets read, the simulation drops in quality. You can actually start to see it physically the more and more I speed it up. Like, there it is. You can see that things are just going all bad. Earth is currently 38 degrees Celsius, and in reality, this game's not perfectly accurate, but it's also not finished yet, so... I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. These videos are not supposed to be educational or scientific in any way. This game is good for demonstrating things, but there's still a lot to be added and there's a lot to be work on, worked on. It's still an early access alpha. Anyways, if you guys like the video, please subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.